Hey there, Luma. It's Denise from LumaHat.com, and this time I want to show you how to knit this gorgeous mock honeycomb stitch pattern. And you have to agree with me that it is fabulous. Now, it is not reversible, which means that the back side does not look like the front, but I give it a pass because it looks so good on the front. And come on, highly textured, easy to knit on a large gauge loom with a single strand of worsted weight yarn. Gotta do it. All right, but heads up, this is a stitch pattern only video. So I won't be showing you how to cast on or cast off because projects, not stitch patterns, determine those things. And let's get right into it. We're gonna start with row one where you're going to slip three with yarn in front and purl three. Now don't go anywhere because you're frightened of this. I'm gonna take you step by step and I promise that it's easy. Please make note of the fact that I do start my row with two knit stitches. It's not part of the pattern, it's just for my swatch. And then I start right here with this peg. It's the first one in a multiple of six. In other words, it takes six stitches to create the pattern. And we start with these three slip stitches here and then we'll be doing three purl stitches next. So again, I'm gonna start with my edge that's not part of the pattern, those two knit stitches. And then we're gonna come here and take the working yarn under the existing loop. And that is where we will start our slip three with yarn in front. So from the top, take your hook and scoop up that working yarn to create a, a new loop as if you were gonna do a purl, but instead take that loop back behind the peg and then take that uh, working yarn and pull it to tighten it and help it go completely behind the peg. You'll see that now the working yarn is literally behind the peg and in front of the fabric. That's why it's a slip with yarn in front. Let's do that again. Remember you need three. So from the top, scoop up, and you're gonna create a loop and take it behind the peg and pull to take the yarn back. Scoop up, take that loop back behind the peg in the back, and then pull it to take that yarn back. And now you'll see that these three pegs, the yarn is behind the pegs, but in front of the fabric. That's where the with yarn in front comes from. Now it's time for the three purls. So you put the working yarn under the existing loop from the top. You're going to scoop up to create a new loop. And then you take the old loop off of the peg. And now that new loop that you just made, you're gonna put that loop on your peg where the old loop was, right here. And then you pull the working yarn to tighten this loop. Let's do that again, because you need three of them. From the top, you're going to scoop up the working yarn, which is under the existing one, scoop up to create a new loop, take the old loop off, put the new loop on and pull. That's two, remember you need three. And I want you to see that back here, you see how different, this one has the yarn under it and these don't. And you see where the difference is, right? You're taking that loop right there, you're taking it off the peg and then you're putting the new loop on. And so all your stitches are nice and tight on the purls. On the slip, you drop the loops back behind the pegs. You see the difference between these two stitches? Slight, but major. All right, I'm going to repeat my uh, stitches three more times and then end with two stitches on the edge. You'll do them as many times as is necessary for your project. Once you're done knitting that row, you're ready for row two, which looks very familiar. You're just gonna flip the pattern and now we're gonna purl three and then slip three with yarn in front. And I know you're confident, you saw that it's super easy. So let's get to it. As before, I start with my two knit stitches, which are my edge and not part of the pattern. And once you're ready, now we're going to do three purl stitches and then three of the slip with yarn in front. So put the yarn under the existing loop. From the top, you're going to scoop up to create a new loop. 
take the old one off put the new one on and pull that's the first purl here's my second i'm going to do the same thing right and we go to purl number three scoop up create a new loop take the old one off put the new one on and pull now you're ready for your slip stitches so again scoop up create a loop take it behind the peg and pull to make it drop under behind that peg do the same thing again that's two and here is my third slip stitch with yarn in front so i put it back and i drop it and there you have your six stitches which you're going to repeat as many times as is necessary for your project rows three and four are the easiest rows ever all you're going to do is basically knit the row it says knit six because that's the multiple on the pattern but you're just gonna knit the row so in this direction i tend to use the flat version of the knit stitch it's a little tighter some folks don't like it um, there are three versions you can uh, that you can use the flat or the classic or my preferred which is the u wrap version of the knit stitch where you half wrap and knit off especially uh, for me, it's comfortable in this direction, but again, you could use the flat or the classic. Do not use the E wrap. All right, let's go to the next row. That row is row five, and this time we're going to knit one, knit one under loose strands, and then knit four. I don't want you to be concerned about the knit one under loose strands because it sounds way more difficult than it actually is. And in fact, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing that particular technique so first let's go ahead and take care of that knit one right here so we put the working yarn over the existing loop and then knit off so we're ready for the knit one under the loose strands next but remember that i said i want to show you more than one option so first i'm going to show you in the video for the butterfly stitch which uses the same technique right here. I'm gonna show you what I did in that video, which is the original way to do it. And I'll show you why I don't like that method. So here is the peg where we're going to do the technique. You take the loop off the peg, and then you need to pick up all of your loose strands. Those are the slip with yarn in front strands. You're gonna pick all of them up and put them in front of that peg okay in this case there was i think six or something doesn't matter as many as you have and once you have them on the peg you put the original loop back on and then take the working yarn and put it all over all of them and from the bottom you're going to scoop down to create a new loop and see how it's a little cumbersome i just it's the way it's supposed to be but i don't like it so you scoop down create a new loop and then take all of those loops that are on the peg off the peg and put that new loop on. And then you just continue knitting. So that's the way I originally learned how to do it. It's probably the better way to do it. I just don't like it. So here's what I did uh, for this pattern on this video. So of course, first you have to take that loop off of that peg and you're going to go pick up your loose strands from the slip stitch in front. In this case, it's two of them. And you put them in front of the loop. Then you're going to make sure you have two of them. <laughs> and then put the stitch that you took off back on the peg. And then to make sure that it ends up like under them, go ahead and push that, that, that loop down under the two that you just put on top so that the other two are over it and then get the strand of yarn over all of them and bring that bottom loop over the top and knit off it's like a knit stitch all right and now that's done you have three stitches on the peg and you don't worry about them from now you're going to get them later on the way back 
all you have to do now is do those four knit stitches so I found that I got the same result doing it this way and I prefer so you choose what's gonna work best for you now I do want to show you one more time how to do this row remember that we're still on row 5 we're just gonna do one more repeat of row 5 so first do your knit stitch and then you're going to do the knit one under the loose strands. So you're going to take the existing loop off the peg and hold on to it. I'm, I'm, this time I'm gonna use um, a little uh, stitch marker. You could use whatever, you can use it, just hold it with your uh, fingers. And then take your hook and you're gonna pick up those slip uh, stitches and put them on the peg and then put the original loop back on that same peg you're gonna push it so that it's under those uh, loose strands and then take the working yarn and put it over those three strands that are currently on the peg now take the bottom loop over the top and knit off and now you have three loops sitting on that peg and your next uh, four stitches are four knit stitches. All right, now you know how to do the knit one under the loose strands my way that I think is easier. Row six is super easy. All you have to do is knit the row. Again, you could use any of the three versions of the knit stitch the flat, the U, or the true. And in this direction, I prefer the U wrap version. So just knit. And when you get to the funky one with the three stitches, you're just gonna knit, knit them all off as one. Just grab all of them and knit off. Then keep going, finish the row, and then you're ready for row seven, where you're going to purl three, and then slip three with yarn in front. All right, Luma, let's do it. We're experts, right? Super easy, three pearls and slip three with yarn in front, easy. All right, first pearl, we put the yarn under the existing loop from the top, scoop up and create a new loop, take the old one off, Put the new one on and pull. That was your first. Here's the second one. New loop, old one off, new one on, pull. New loop, old one off, new one on, pull. And now the slip three with yarn in front. We're going a little quicker, okay? Scoop from the bottom up, create a new loop and scoop back and drop the working yarn. Scoop up, take it back, drop it. Scoop up, create a new loop, take it back, pull the yarn and drop it. And that is your slip three with yarn in front and you're ready for the next row, which is row eight and it's the exact opposite. This time you're gonna start with three slip stitch with yarn in front and then do three purl stitches. So again, from the bottom, scoop up, push it back and drop the stitch behind the peg. You scoop up, take the stitch to the back, pull to drop the stitch and then that's three slip with yarn in front and then your purl stitches which you're going to scoop up to create a new loop take the old one off put the new one on and pull do three of those and that is row eight and now row nine and ten you're just going to knit the row you big time already know how to do that, so I don't need to show you. We're gonna skip straight to row 11 where you're gonna knit four, then knit one under the loose strand, and then knit one. And I know you guys know how to do this also, but just in case, let's show it. Let's start with those four knit stitches real quickly. One, two, three, and four. And then that's gonna be followed by the one knit stitch under the 
uh, loose strands. And I'm going to use this stitch holder. By the way, they come in different sizes and they're all available at lumahat.store. That's your little commercial for the day. All right, so take your stitch holder or whatever you're using. By the way, you can use a locking stitch marker. You could just use your finger. You don't need anything at all. So I like this small one and I'm going to hold the stitch with it. And then with my hook, I'm going to pull up and grab those two uh, slip stitches. And I'm going to add them to the front of the peg and then put the original loop back on on my peg take the stitch holder off and i'm going to take that stitch and like before i'm going to push it under those two because it needs to be under the loose strands and then take my working yarn and put it over all three grab that bottom loop and knit off and there you have it now one knit stitch at the end all right you keep repeating as necessary just keep going and then row 12 yay all you're gonna do is knit the row and don't forget the funky one gets knit off just like all the rest of them he's no different hey guys thanks for watching till the end i appreciate it so much please remember to watch more videos like comment and share because all of that helps me a lot